Well, hey friends, welcome to chapter six of the 31 Days of Abiding Project. I'm not sure what we're calling this. Every day we're coming to this book by Andrew Murray and reading a chapter of this devotional book and learning and thinking and exploring and asking hopefully good questions about what does it really mean to abide in Jesus. And in chapter six, uh, Murray entitles that chapter, God himself as united you to him. Wow. One of my favorite verses in the New Testament, and I have many, is 1 Corinthians six seventeen. It says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And I believe, l- let me back out of this. Think with me for a moment. Um, I was thinking this earlier today as I was reading my Bible about myself and about many other people whose lives I have the privilege of speaking into. See if you can relate to this. I, I actually think there are many times for many of us where we live with that sort of uncomfortable sense that we're not really where we should be in our relationship with God. That it's not like God's mad at us or rejected us, but we're not, things are not exactly as the Lord would have them to be, that we're not as close as we could be, that there, we're not um, living in that absolute place of oneness. Can you relate to that? At times, many, many times in my life, and hopefully won't, but it probably may happen again, where I feel myself thinking like, Lord, I kind of feel like I've you know, gone far from you. The Bible says, draw near to him and he'll draw nigh to us. And at times, I think if we're honest, we have that feeling that we are far from him. Again, can you relate to that? I can, maybe you can't, but I can. And how do we live that life of union with him? Again, I think this chapter really has all the keys we need. We need to realize we have been made one with him. It really would, uh, it, it's a necessary thing. It would behoove us, I'd like to say, to really think through what actually happened on Calvary. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus took the sins of the world, like every trespass and sin that had ever been committed from Adam until the last human being, until he returns, you know, whatever that means, he, I believe he took those on the cross, but he actually took that fallen nature of sin. He took what Paul calls the old man, if you will, that Adamic nature or satanic nature, that, um, that part of us that was fallen, that, he took half of that, that little verse in Romans where Paul says the things I want to do, I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, I do, you know, a wretched man who will deliver me. That's what Jesus did on the cross. He took that man and he nailed him to the cross of Calvary. And when Jesus died, our old yucky sinful nature died from God's vantage point, from God's, from eternity's point of view. In, in God's, God sees ultimate truth. And God looks at us and said, I have dealt with your sinful nature. I'm not dealing with your sinful nature day by day. I'm not progressively over time through experiences and all things working together, trying to make you into a better person. I have taken that old you and slew your dark passenger on the cross of Calvary. And then when Jesus raised in newness of life, we were raised And the Lord literally looks at us and calls us a brand new creation. And it's not a new creation in the sense Adam was a new creation. Adam was a living being created in God's image and likeness. But Adam and Eve, if you will, were separate from the Lord. We are not restored to the garden. In Christ, we've actually been made one in Christ We are joined one with him, vine and branches. And if we're going to learn to abide in him, one of the greatest keys is realizing in the spirit, we are already abiding in him. Your spirit does not get close to God and go far from God. Your spirit's never had a bad day since you became a Christian. Your spirit's never been far from God. Your spirit's never sinned. Paul says that he that is born of God does not sin in 1 John. Then he says, he that abides in him does not sin. Now, can I sin? Yes, I can. But to sin, I need to, at least in my soulish realm, not be abiding in Jesus. When I'm absolutely one with him, connected with him, when he's filling my soul, when my eye is single, my whole body is full of light, in that place, I won't sin. What I need to do is what I spoke about in an earlier video and not keep God in my thoughts and push him away and go away and practice some of those old ways and and thoughts and actions, if you will. So 
It's vital that we catch this thing. We have been joined to him. You are in Christ Jesus. God placed you in Christ Jesus. And today I want you to grasp that fact. I want you to thank the Lord. That's true. I'm in Christ. His righteousness is mine, his wisdom is sanctification, his redemption. He's flowing in and flowing through me at all times. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good. Hey, I'm going to check out here today, but I'll be back in uh, tomorrow's video and talk about the wisdom that is made to us in Christ Jesus. Bye for now.